Now that we've inspected our valve cover gaskets and made a decision about whether to replace them or not, we need to reinstall them. This little part, the cup part, goes down. So make sure you install them the right way around uh, back onto the engine. And then go ahead and plug in each of your injectors. Now we're, leaving, we're purposely leaving out the glow plugs at this point. So don't install them yet. Now we have a problem at this point that we have to solve before we go any further. Our problem is, is that each of the cylinders has oil that's gotten into them when we extracted the injectors. We can't leave that oil in there. It will cause hydrostatic lock. In other words, as the piston goes up with the fluid in it and both valves close on the compression stroke, then it's going to lock and you can possibly bend connecting rods and cause problems. I mean serious internal engine problems if you don't get that oil out of there. One, there's a couple different ways to extract this oil. One is to put a, a, a like a boat uh, oil changing type apparatus that uses vacuum to suck it out of there. <coughs> but the easy way to do this is to just install the valve cover with the glow plugs out uh, with just a couple bolts, one on the top up here and one on the bottom. And you spin the motor and this pushes all of the oil out of the cylinders back into the engine. Once you've rotated the engine and the oil has been pushed out of the cylinder, then you remove the valve cover. The then you take the two bolts off that hold the valve cover on for just this momentary uh, process and then you finish putting in the glow plugs. This way you don't have to have any special tools to do this. It's a little bit more work but it only takes a couple minutes and it's extremely effective for getting the oil out of the cylinder. Okay, now that you got the valve covers on with just a couple bolts, you want to go over to your starter solenoid. You want to hook up a starter switch that basically will goes from your positive side over here to your starter solenoid and hooks on and hooks on where the plug comes from your ignition key. Just hook up one battery and you don't have to hook up your harnesses or any of that stuff and, and don't turn on the key. Okay, bye. By turning the engine over this way, you're not going to build any compression and it pushes all of the oil out of the cylinder. Roll it over for about 15 seconds and then you're done. The reason why you put the valve covers on is so that the oil doesn't shoot out of there and go all over the place. You might still make a little bit of a mess, but nothing like if you didn't have them on there. Let it sit for a minute, let the oil drain off of the valve covers and whatnot. Uh, so it goes back down into the pan and we can take the valve covers off and finish the job. Now go ahead and remove your remote starter button and reinstall the wiring so it, as it should be. Make sure you put this plug on there because when you go to crank the engine it's not going to start. That's one of those things I always forget to do and when I go to start the engine I wonder why it doesn't start and go, oh yeah I didn't plug that thing on. Now it's time to go ahead and install all eight glow plugs and all eight of the high pressure oil redirects here put them back onto each of the injectors. One of the things I got to point out about reinstalling the valve covers, you see how these clips like to flip back like this. You, on the passenger side valve cover you don't have a lot of clearance over here. And when you install the valve cover it's real easy to push one of these clips back and knock the plug off, which will require you to remove the valve cover again. So before you cinch down the valve cover, Double check, just lift it up a little bit and make sure that these clips are on here and you didn't knock them loose installing the valve cover. Basically to get the truck back to its original spot is just a reverse process of how you took it apart, you know. And the way you know you're finished is that when all the parts that you had on the ground are, are gone. But damn, I wonder where these two bolts go. How, how do I deal with that? Now, let me tell you something. You make sure you're organized enough so that you, you, you don't have leftover stuff. Every nut, bolt, and washer that's supposed to be on this truck should be back on it. There's nothing that shouldn't be there. So make sure when you do one of these projects that you uh, don't have any leftover nuts and bolts. When you first start to crank the truck, it's going to take a few seconds for the high pressure oil to build because it emptied out of the, the uh, cylinder head. Just crank your truck, but don't crank the starter more than about 15 or 30 seconds and give it a minute or so to cool off. You don't want to burn your starter up. It's going to take a few sec times to get your engine to start when you first do this. And when you do get it to start, it's going to smoke pretty good for a little bit. Woo! 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 See? 
going to kill some bugs now. Expect it to smoke a little bit. It's going to do this. And as you drive up and down the street, Take a minute or two for it to smooth out and all the air gets worked out of the system. Just be patient. Just let it idle for a little bit, get, get, get good and warmed up. Woo wee, that's stinky. Make sure you do it outside and don't do it inside the garage of your house and smoke the whole house up. And it, it ain't gonna matter how much money you save doing this yourself because your wife's gonna be pissed off at you for smoking up the house. Roll the truck outside and start it up. Now you may get a check engine light pop on because while you were trying to crank the engine uh, you didn't have any high pressure oil so it's important that you have some sort of scan tool uh, to be able to uh, take the diagnostic trouble codes out of the computer so that we can take this check engine light off. It's real important that you have this tool or tool similar to it. If you want to check out more how the scan tools work you need to check out scan tool analysis. If you want to check out, if you don't understand how scan tools work, you need to check out scan tool analysis. It explains it completely in that section. Now you want to check these plugs out very carefully. And you want to look very carefully at these end ones. These are the glow plug uh, lines that go over to the glow plugs. Glow plugs draw a lot of electricity and as a result, these will get hot and they'll burn. And if they burn far enough, they'll get into the injector part of the harnesses and cause uh, a skip in the engine. Very, very, very important that you look all of these fittings over very carefully to make sure that there's nothing broken or cracked and that there's nothing burnt on any of them. Be careful when you deal with the inner plugs and the, and the fittings because they can get brittle and hard over time. And you want to check this plug also on the inside. And you want to check the inside of the valve cover gasket plug also. It's absolutely crucial that these parts function correctly. Now on the early model, instead of having just one plug, you have a plug here and a plug here. It's the same procedure even though the plugs are different. And the early model ones were susceptible to burning, especially on the driver's side rear by the turbocharger. That's why when they updated and went to the second generation power stroke, they redid the harness and just did it with one plug. Pay very close attention to these parts because it's crucial that they function correctly. You want to remove all eight of these out of the bottom side of the injector uh, collar that holds the injectors in. They're located right down here and you want to take all eight of these out. Now you see now you're able to slide the upper part of the injector collar off of the upper bolt. We leave the upper bolt in. Now this may look like it's a little bit extreme to get out injectors is to have to go get a great big crowbar like this but I'm here to tell you the front ones are easy but the ones in the back can be a real bugger to get at. But here G just do it on this one right here. Now, what we do, here, hold that light, please. What we do is we lift the collar up, and you slide the crowbar underneath the collar, just like that, and now you pry it up, and out the injector comes. Now, there's going to be fuel and oil that are going to go down into the cylinder. Yeah, out she goes. And we'll just let it flow down in there. Take a minute and let it all go down in there and then we can extract the oil at a later date. When you remove the injectors, you want to inspect each injector to make sure that the copper gasket ring on the bottom of the injector is attached to the injector. Otherwise, you're going to have to dig it out of the cylinder head, which isn't any fun. But 99.9% .9 of the time, the copper uh, washer will be on there. But it's very important that you extract that gasket with the injector. If, you don't ha if the washer does not come out with the injector, then it will be down in the bore and it will make the other injector sit incorrectly and it won't seal the high pressure oil and fuel correctly, you know, causing various problems that we don't want to have to cope with. Very, very important to make sure that this copper gasket is on the injector. It's just a process of extracting the other six injectors. Same methodology. Pop goes the weasel and the weasel goes pop. Out she comes. Now at this point, we want to extract all eight glow plugs. 
It's important to take the glow plugs out so that we can get the oil that has tra been trapped in the cylinder. 10 millimeter deep and it's a whole lot easier to take these things off when the injector is out of the way. And they always seem to go in a whole lot easier than they come out. This is an excellent time to make a determination of whether you need new ones. When you're extracting glow plugs, it's important to use as narrow and thin a 10 millimeter socket as possible because the rocker arm sort of just binds and gets in the way. Go ahead and pull your glow plugs out and set them off to the side and we'll test them in just a moment to make sure that they're good. Now to test a glow plug, you know, you could use a meter to check continuity. But if you don't have a meter, there's one uh, cheap and dirty way to do this. Take the, take the glow plug and ground it out just like it's in the block. Take the glow plug and ground it out against, hold that thing on there Mikey. Ground out the glow plug against the negative battery terminal. Hook your test light to the positive battery terminal so that when you touch ground, it lights. And then, you hook, and then you touch it to the tip. If the glow plug is good, then there will be continuity through the glow plug. It's just that simple. That's a simple way to, to test these. And you don't have to go hunt your meter up that you lost track of five years ago. That's a good glow plug right there. And then just go through and test each of the eight to make sure that they're all good. Because now is the perfect time to replace them. You have them out anyway. Now we're pretty much in a position to install our new injectors. Okay, glow plugs are out. Everything's cleaned out. Installing the injectors is relatively simple. You just have to lift the collar and slide it down over that upper bolt right there. That's your upper bolt that holds on the injector. And you just slide, you just slide this collar around that bolt and put it down in there. New seals can sometimes be stubborn in terms of trying to get the injector to sit down in there. This is why we'll use a rubber mallet and gently there. Once you hear it go thump like that, it's all the way down. Now it's just a matter of installing the lower bolt in. Just repeat this for the other seven injectors. This process goes a lot quicker when you have help. Just someone to help carry the injectors over to you so you don't have to climb in and out of the engine bay of the truck. Once you have the injector set in there, it's time to put in the lower hold down bolt. It's not crucial that these things are tightened within an inch of their life, but they need to be good and snug. It's not, and it's not crucial that when you're installing the injector that you tap it all the way home on the first try. Even if you get it down there and it's, you know, a quarter of an inch or, or half an inch out, it's okay because this bolt will help to snug it. And you take it all the way down until it bottoms out and just snug it up. You don't have to go real, real tight with it. I prefer to do this process by hand uh, simply because air tools will sometimes snap off a bolt in an inopportune spot. It'd be a real bitch to try to extract out the broken piece in a tight spot. But when you do it by hand, the likelihood of breaking something is much, much less. Also, if you're watching my videos and you're not watching them on PowerStrokeHelp.com, you're really missing where the action is. You need to go to the website PowerStrokeHelp.com and check us out because there's a lot of information on there that could be very useful to you as a PowerStroke owner to keep your truck on the road as long as possible. And remember, if you press the Arch Oil button, all the proceeds from Arch Oil uh, go to help train a vet, the nonprofit organization that I run, to help veterans ease their way back into civilian life. Thank you for all your support for making PowerStrokeHelp.com the number one stop for PowerStroke owners on the internet. Also, if you're watching my videos and you're not watching them on PowerStrokeHelp.com, you're really missing where the action is. You need to go to the website PowerStrokeHelp.com and check us out because there's a lot of information on there that could be very useful to you as a PowerStroke owner to keep your truck on the road as long as possible. And remember, if you press the Arch Oil button, all the proceeds from Arch Oil uh, go to help train a vet, the nonprofit organization that I run, to help veterans ease their way back into civilian life. Thank you for all your support for making PowerStrokeHelp.com the number one stop for power stroke owners on the internet.